Plaster Gardeners. Here I am again, it's National Invasive Species Awareness Week, and behind me is another invasive of which I have zero tolerance for. The name, Pyrus caloriana, the calorie pear. But most of you don't know it by that name. Most of you know it, it's the parent of the Bradford pear that too many people have growing in their yard as a lovely ornamental. And back in 1997, when I was attending the University of Maryland, I remember the U.S. National Arboretum touting that the Bradford pear has become one of the top 10 ornamental trees in the United States. And then we learned some interesting things about it. First of all, people loved it. For one thing, they're loaded with white flowers in the spring and it's covered with pollinators, as a matter of fact, and those flowers occur before the leaves occur. And then it's got a perfect pyramidal shape. It wasn't real wide, and so the Arboretum thought this is the perfect solution. It's a medium-sized tree, and it's not broad, and it won't block traffic. And then plus it had pear-like foliage that was beautiful, glossy green, and then in the fall you have beautiful red fall color. And plus it was a fast grower, so a homeowner wanted it in their yard, and it was tolerant of air pollution, which made it another good city street tree. Voila! But then we learned that it had intersections in the branch patterns, which you can kind of see in the top here. The intersections are more similar to the way your fingers are born on your hand here, as opposed to having a branch intersection like this at a wider angle. And we learned that these narrow intersections tend to break in snow. And then the Bradford pear was very vulnerable to snow and ice breakage. And so what did they do? They went back to the drawing board and they released other genotypes of the calorie pear onto the market. The original Bradford pear was self-sterile, which is often a characteristic of many of our fruit trees. They, they don't want to breed with themselves. And that was the way it was with the Bradford pear. So therefore the homeowner did not have any fruit from the Bradford pear in their yard. Yahoo! But the Bradford pear, although self-fertile, was able to pollinate with these other genotypes of pears that were introduced that didn't break. And the two started cross-pollinating. And all you had to have was maybe 300 feet between these different trees and they could cross-pollinate. And whammo, these pears became copious fruit producers. And to this day, that's what they do. They're still fast growing. They're copious fruit producers and the birds love to eat them as well as the red fox and the raccoons and animals. So they spread them and it becomes dense stands in our fields where there's been a neglected field that hasn't been mowed or there's no pasture land anymore, maybe no animals on it. That ag land will immediately turn into a dense stand of these Bradford pears and they have little spurs on them. So you never mow this. If you have it as an invasive species, don't kid yourself and think you're gonna cut it off and it's gonna be fine. No, it is. it sends vigorous shoots, shoots with a vengeance. And the spurs that it develops, which is typical of a fruit tree too, they have fruit spurs, they can actually pop the tires. So here in the state park where they keep occurring in one particular field, they have popped these large six foot round tractor tires. The spurs have popped them numerous times. So, whoa, so come on over, let's take a little bit closer look. This is a not a good tree. And if you have it in your neighborhoods, I know it's pretty when it flowers white in the spring, but this is one that we need to educate the public about. Teach people not to plant Bradford pears because they will pollinate and become spreaders of the fruit that then inoculates all of our fields and this park is loaded with all of these calorie pears. So let me show it to you up close and I'll show you the branch pattern. Let me show you these fruiting spurs as we go across. So I, I don't know that you, you know, unless you were here to feel this, but these are real stiff. That's a real stiff spur. And down here is another stiff spur. So they're real, Dance, and they'll, like I said, they pop the tractor tires. Here's your branch pattern that's weak. You can see the way it, it's coming up there at tight angles, more like your fingers, as opposed to a, a wide crotch. Of, they're called branch crotches. A wide one would be a more desirable. And at this time of the year, you can see the white fuzzy little buds. 
So is it zooming in adequately on that? Let me still hold my hand behind it, so maybe it's zooming. So white fuzzy buds, alternate. You can tell it's fast growing because look at the length of the, between the inner nodes. You can see the length in there. So vigorous sprouter, what's the best solution? Huh, really, this is one that it's helpful to resort to herbicides. Just cut them off at the base and treat them with a couple drops of a systemic herbicide. And that's a reasonable solution for this Henri Little Invasive. But they're coming up all up and down this hedgerow in this meadow. We've got fields of them in other places where they keep occurring because they're dropping seeds, dropping new seeds all the time. So Master Gardeners, we got to stop this guy.